So the last four-sided figure which we're going to discuss in its area is a parallelogram. So we all know that parallelogram is a four-sided closed figure with two pairs of sides parallel. And of course, because they are parallel, they are equal. The opposite sides are parallel and equal. So when I have the parallelogram, we know that parallelogram has its pair of sides, two pairs of sides which are parallel and hence they are equal. The parallelogram is a four-sided closed figure which has opposite sides parallel and equal. So in case of this parallelogram ABCD, I would like to find the area as we have found for quadrilateral, trapezium and rhombus. Now as we have constructed the area for different regions, even in parallelogram, we are going to construct in a similar manner by dividing this parallelogram into two regions or the two triangles as can be obtained when I cut the diagonal BD. I get the region R1 and the region R2 which I am going to find the areas and then add independently. So let's take the region R1 but before this let me take the dimensions. Let the height of the parallelogram be H and let the base of the parallelogram be B. So therefore even its opposite side will also be B. So when I know the base and height I can find the area of the parallelogram by cutting that by dividing the given region into R1 and R2. So when I have the region R1 this is nothing but the triangle A, B and D where this is the height and this is the base. Therefore area of region R1 is nothing but area of triangle ABD. Area of triangle ABD in turn is nothing but half into base into height which is half B H which can be seen that the base is B and the height is H. So this is B H over 2. This is equation 1. So this is area of the region 1 as obtained through the geometrical concept of the area of triangle. So let's also find the area of the region R2 then we sum up to get the area of parallelogram. So the region R2 is nothing but the triangle which I get it as D B C. Now because this is B even this region would also be B therefore my length DC is also B. So my base is B but I don't know the height but when I see, see this height as compared to this even this length would be as similar as this therefore this will also be the height of the triangle. So this height of the triangle as taken here will also be H because these two sides are parallel so all the perpendicular sides taken along the parallel sides will always be equal. So this H equal to H. So I get this as H and this as base. So area of region R2 is nothing but area of triangle DBC. So area of triangle DBC is nothing but half times base into height. So taking this triangle, this is half BH. This is in turn BH over 2. Now as I see here, I get area of region R1 as BH over 2 and area of region R2 as BH over 2. Therefore, area of parallelogram ABCD is nothing but area of region R1 plus R2. But I already have area of region R1 which is calculated to be BH over 2 as can be seen from equation 1. So I have BH over 2 plus area of region R2 which is also obtained from equation 2 as BH over 2. Now as I can clearly see that when I take the LCM and simplify this, I get this to be 2BH over 2. So that on cancellation of 2, I finally get BH or B into H which is the area of the parallelogram. So in general form I can say that area of parallelogram is the product of base and height. If I know the base of a parallelogram and the height of the parallelogram then by just finding the product of the base and the height I get the area of the parallelogram which is required and hence the derivation is this. Area of parallelogram can be considered with the minimum conditions of base and height hence 
base into height is the formula for area of par parallelogram. Now we'll see how the surveying of field is done using certain measurements. So usually the surveyors write then the field book about the measurements which they generally take in this form. So let's see how this can be converted into a perfect field with the given measurements. So this is just the minimum information given about the directions and the measurements on the right or left and then marked with some indexes. So this information can be converted into a geometrical plane figure which forms the required field. Then the surveyors identify the shape of the field then they make different various precautionary measures for that. So let's see how the surveyors convert the given measurement in their field book into the general diagram of a plane figure, generally what we see in mathematics. So when we start with this, I always see that the surveyor is starting his point from A and then ending at C. So I try to go from bottom to the top. So what I do is I mark the point A, then I reach up to C totally from A to C the distance being 160 meters. Of course, the measurements which I take here are considered in meters. Now, because it is very difficult to draw 16 meters of line on a sheet of paper, we randomly take the length in usual form with the suitable measures, measurements taken on that particular line. So let's see how we are going to draw the surveying field of the surveyor using the given measurements. Now starting with A, let me draw a line from A to C. If I start with A, then let me draw a line until C so that this whole length is 160 meters. Assumption that the distance AC is 160 meters, I, I draw a line, a vertical line from A to C. So that is the first step which I follow in converting the given dimensions into the plane figure in case of surveying the field. This is my step one. Now step two, I proceed from bottom to top. So I see that from A, <coughs> the distance is 60 meters. Therefore, from A, I take the distance of 60 meters. So when I start from A, my first measurement of 60 meters reaches up to this point. Now from this point, I see that I proceed to the left 40 meters where I get the point A. Therefore, from the point where I reach 60 meters, from this point, I move 40 meters to the left, which is nothing but somehow in this form. So this is assumed to be 40 meters. So moving to the left, I get the point E as given by the direction of the surveying data. So similarly, from this, my next measurement is 90. From this diagram, it is understood that from A, the distance I reach here is 90, but not from 60. This has to be assumed as the distance from A is 90. Next, from A it is 130. From A it is 160. Therefore, the whole of distance AC is taken to be 160 meters. Therefore, when I take the measurement of A from this point as 90, already the measurement of 60 is done. So, it would be the remaining 30 which comes out here, which is nothing but 30 meters. And this is 40 meters. Now, at this point, again, on the right, I have to take 60 meters towards the right, which gives me the point B. So, horizontally, I just take 60 meters to the right, so that I get the point B. So this is where I get the point B on the right as can be seen from the diagram. Now from, from here, I assume that from A it is 130. Therefore, from, from here, from A I assume that the distance is 130 till here. So indirectly, the distance from the point where I reach to 90 to 130 would be 130 minus 90 which is 40. So because till here it is 90, from here if I reach the distance of 40 meters, then I think we are unto the mark of 130. So this distance being 40 meters would just give me the point where 130 is reached. Now after 130 I see that there's a point D on the left with 30 meters onto the left. Therefore I take a point which is 
30 meters on to the left so that here there is a point D which is obtained this is the point D now from here obviously this distance would be 30 meters which I take it as C so here I get the distance of 30 meters because 160 minus 30 is 30 meters so from 130 it jumps up to 30 meters to reach up to the final point C so this is how I understand the obtaining of each of the points which are done through the given information of the measurements keeping in mind that when we proceed from A each of the point <coughs> or each of the value is assumed to start from A therefore the distance from A to this would be 60 meters then the distance from this A to the point where I had to mark the 90 meters would be somewhere here but already 60 meters is measured so the remaining would be 90 minus 60 which is 30 which comes over here it's not that you take 90 meters from here and the whole of the problem goes wrong so then from here <coughs> I jump to 40 meters more so therefore I reach up to 40 meters then from here I jump up to 30 meters so this distance would be 30 meters and then finally whatever I have on the right for 90 at that particular point I move 60 meters right to obtain B I move 40 meters left to obtain E at this 60 junction and then I move 30 meters to the left to obtain D and finally I get a set of points which are at a suitable distance as per the measurement given in the given problem now the question comes in how do you obtain a field it is simple join all the points with the ruler then this closed figure which is obtained through a ruler by joining of each of the points will give me a sort of a shape which is called surveying of the field so the field as obtained here is a one one two three four five a five-sided figure which is called a pentagon it's a pentagon field which is obtained from the given measurements this is how surveying of field is done for any measurements given but keeping in mind that for obtaining the diagram we proceed from bottom to the top if it is given from A to C wherever from comes from there we start with the measurements and 2 is the final destination where the points are reached so from A to C is proceeded from bottom to the top and this is what is the field as obtained from the given measurements a field as obtained through the geometrical measurements surveying of field now how do we find the area of this field as obtained from the measurements for, of the given problem so how do we find its area the question is about finding the area of this field not only about drawing the field but also finding its area so as we can see here this is a field which has various blocks so let me start with this I identify that this is a triangle a triangle a triangle a triangle a trapezium because these two are parallel sides so if I find areas of these four triangles and area of this trapezium with the formula which we have already discussed in the previous session in finding the area of trapezium and finding the area of triangle with their respective formula then we can find the area of the entire field which we need to find just summing up each of the areas would give me the area of the entire field which is required in the given problem so for this let me just divide each of the regions into R1, R2, R3, R4 and R5 so let me mark them F, G, H then I have different types of triangles and trapeziums out here so let me extract them individually and then find the areas of each and every plane figure which I am going to consider from these blocks of the entire field so let me start with the triangle DCH so coming with triangle DCH I find that this is a right angle triangle because this would obviously be 90 degrees this also is a right angle triangle this also and this also hence all the four triangles inside the field are right angle triangles so keeping in mind about the right angle triangle property we know that area of a right angle triangle or any triangle is half into base into height and area of trapezium is half h into a plus b where a and b are the dimensions of the parallel sides so let's start with 
triangle DCH, then when I want to find area of triangle DCH is nothing but half times base which is 30 as I can see from this clearly the base is 30 and the height is 30 if you just take the dimensions then I have base times height then this would be 15 3 is 450 meters square because the dimensions are in meters the, the lengths are given to be measured in meters hence the area of triangle DCH is 450 meters square so let's also find next with the triangle BCG so triangle BCG is also a right angle triangle therefore area of triangle BCG is half times base times height now base is 60 so this would be half times as can be see, clearly seen in the diagram base being 60 would be with the formula half into base into height now the height is 40 plus 30 because CG is CF plus FG therefore the whole of the height is 30 plus 40 which is 70 meters as can be obtained by adding each of the individual dimensions to obtain the whole length or the whole height of the triangle BCG now this would give me 30 times 7 threes 2100 meters square so my area of triangle BCG is 2100 meters square similarly I go to the triangle BGA or AGB and find in the similar manner so my next triangle here is triangle AGB this is of course an inverted triangle where the base is BG and the height is AG so base is BG which is 60 meters and the height AG is 30 plus this distance is 60 so 60 plus 30 is 90 because this is 60 and this is 30 the whole of AG is 30 plus 60 which is 90 so my height of this triangle would be 90 and the base would be 60 meters therefore here area of triangle AGB will be half times base times height which is 90 this would be 30 times 9 threes 2700 meter square so my height here is 2700 meter square my area here is 2700 meter square for the triangle AGB similarly I take the triangle AFE where I find the area but clearly I see here the base is 40 meters and the height is 60 meters therefore triangle AFE will have area of triangle AFE is half times base into height so this on further simplification gives me 20 1200 meters square so this is what I obtain for area of triangle AFE then finally this is the final region left over here where I had to find area of DHFE which is clearly a trapezium because one pair of its sides DH and EF are parallel this is a trapezium one pair of parallel sides now if we just take the trapezium D, D H E F D H F E in this case I find that my diagram which has 30 and 40 and this length let me just take this separately as the diagram then in this case these two are the parallel sides now the dimensions of this are 30 and 40 so this is 30 and this is 40 which is A so one of them is A and one of them is B as per the trapezium area which we already found in the previous session half H into A plus B where A is 30 and B is 40 and H is the distance between the parallel sides which is nothing but this will be H the distance between parallel sides is this being perpendicular this will be H and therefore HF is the H which can be obtained by taking 40 plus 30 this 40 
plus this 30 added gives me 70, which is the height HF. So this H would be 70 meters. So using all this basic definition, basic dimensions, my area of trapezium, which is area of trapezium DHFE is nothing but half H into A plus B such that on substitution I get half times H which is 70 and A which is 30 and B which is 40 when added with use me 30 plus 40 is also equally 70 so that this on further simplification gives me 35 Seven fives, seven threes, twenty-four, two thousand four hundred and fifty meters square. So each of the area is obtained for area of trapezium is two thousand four hundred and fifty meters square. Then area of the triangles, the four triangles, is obtained to be this. Then now when I wanted to find the area of the entire field, I'm going to add each of them so that I get. The area of the each of the block but when combined gives me the area of the entire field which is required for the given dimensions of the example problem so let's add all these therefore continuing here to here I just get area of required field would be nothing but by just adding each of them 450 plus 2100 plus 2700 plus 1200 plus 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5, 2450. Now this on addition gives me the area of the entire field. So let's see how the addition happens here. So let me take 2450 one two zero zero and two seven zero zero two one zero zero and four fifty so when I add I get zero here and then here it is five plus five ten then I take here seven eight ten eighteen nineteen six seven eight so I get eight thousand nine hundred as the sum of each of the values therefore this reduces to eight thousand nine hundred meters square which is the so area is 8900 meters square for the entire field which is the final answer for the given problem so this is how i find the area of the field by first plotting the field using the basic definition of basic rules of going from a to c and then measuring each of them on the right and left on the top and then once i get the measurements i get i just join them with a ruler then I get the plane figures whose areas I'm going to find individually as blocks. Then combined area of each of the blocks gives me area of the entire field. And this is how area of the required field is obtained for any problem where surveying of field is done. In this case, area being 8,900 meter square. Now that we have found the area of the field in the previous problem, we identified that the previous problem had a field which was in the shape of a pentagon. So what, what makes us think is that to find the area of a field is indirectly about finding the area of a polygon. As in previous case it was a five sided polygon or a phygon which is a pentagon. Therefore the field which was in the shape of a pentagon makes us understand that area of any polygon can be found if you can divide them into blocks and find area of each of the block and the block can be either a triangle or a trapezium or a quadrilateral or a rhombus or a parallelogram or any sort of different rectangles or squares which we have decided discussed in the previous sessions therefore when we see let's randomly just discuss about how areas of polygons can be found by splitting them into different regions or different blocks so in this problem if i just take this with a, B, C, D, E is a pentagon, a five-sided figure and similarly the same pentagon is also taken here. In this case, if suppose I have the diagonal AC joint and the diagonal AD joint, then in this case if I know the height H1, H2 and H3, then I just find the areas of the regions A, B, C, 
then ACD and AED because these two are three triangles where each of the triangles areas will be formed and then when I add each of the three triangles with their heights and bases then sum of all the three areas of triangles will form the area of a pentagon. This is one way of calculating the area of a polygon. But the same problem, the same area ABCDE, the pentagon which I wanted to find only when one diagonal is given but two of the heights are known here where one is H1 and the other is H2 which is known. Both are not equal because these two are not parallel. H1 is not equal to H2. So if I know the height H1, the height H2 and the height H3, then I can find the area of the triangle ABF, DCG, then the trapezium BCGF and the triangle AED separately where the four regions are added to find the area of the required pentagon. So this is one way of calculating the area of this plus this plus this plus this and then summing up to find the area of the entire pentagon. This is one way of also finding the area of a pentagon. So different ways of approaching is possible for a polygon where areas are obtained. But finally we understand that when you want to split the polygon into different blocks they can be either triangles, they can be either trapeziums, they can be either rectangles or squares, anything where each of the formula is already discussed where we need to substitute accordingly and then find the answer. By identifying the shape of each of the block, we do it very carefully.